Hey everyone, John Greenwald here with TheBlackVault.com. Today I recorded an interview with Tony Begralia. You'll remember him from not too long ago, making the claims about how the Pentagon admitted to having UFO debris and that they sent him the test results through the Freedom of Information Act. Well, viewers of this channel will know, I didn't think his interpretation was accurate at all, and I felt it was way more sensationalism. So I explained that in a video posted just weeks ago. As you can imagine, that didn't go over too well with Tony. So after he continued to release additional information, but I felt it was still not accurate, I invited him on the show for a friendly and respectful discussion. I have respect for anyone who will step into the vault, even if we don't agree. So we did the interview. As you can also likely expect, at times it got a little bit heated. Stay tuned. You're about to journey inside the Black Vault. That's right, everybody. As always, thank you so much for tuning in and making this your podcast or your live stream of choice. I'm your host, John Greenwald Jr., founder and creator of theblackvault.com. And you'll notice that today's show is just a little bit different. Now, my guest, Tony Bergalia, uh, you've heard about him on this channel before. I talked a little bit about the headlines that he has come out with. And I extended an invitation, and uh, to his credit, uh, despite our respectful disagreement with each other, he accepted, and here he is via telephone. Tony, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to speak to all of us. Hi, John. I appreciate the opportunity to do that and to have the opportunity to talk about the FOIA and to help to clarify anything that uh, folks have questions about. Well, very good. Well, I'm looking forward to it. And, and again, uh, thank you for your time to do it. Now, before we get into the FOIA and to get into everything, uh, you did choose not to do this via video, and you had said that you're okay to address that. Would you like to tell everybody why uh, you prefer not to be seen? Because uh, I, I couldn't even sure. get a picture of to you. Uh, just the to nature kind of, show of my work everybody. really prevents me from having my image broadcast widely. Uh, and so I've elected to instead uh, simply do audio. Uh, and in fact, before very recently, I've never even had my voice uh, over the air. Uh, but I'm, uh, I think, obligated to, because of the nature of this story, come forward uh, in a way that's a little more direct than I have been in the past. So I'm here to talk, but not to show my face. Fair enough. Well, I at least wanted to, to give everyone uh, a chance to hear that side of it. Now, before sure. we get into the story that you're really here to talk about, which is the UFO debris and the documents that you received, can you give everybody a little bit of background about how you got into UFO research? Because this isn't your first entry into it. You've been around for quite some time. Uh, let everybody know a little bit about your background in UFOs and why you got started in it. Sure. Well, like many people, John, it began with a personal sighting uh, when I was a preteen uh, living in the New York City metropolitan area where I grew up. Uh, and I had observed uh, a craft at about age 12 or 13, a uh, cigar shaped uh, craft, uh, which was uh, uh, actually near Rye, New York, in Westchester County, and uh, had seen uh, what could not possibly be a plane or a vehicle from this planet. Even at that very young age, I knew that. And so, like many preteens, I got involved in the UFO magazines of the time and began reading the literature and became immersed in it to, to the point where I also began filing FOIA requests at a very young age. So you and I have that in common. And uh, uh, it isn't a vocation, though. Uh, my real vocation is in executive search. Uh, I find CEOs and CFOs and COOs for major companies uh, throughout the country. Uh, and in fact, some of my work is done in the defense and intelligence uh, sectors. Uh, and so uh, it's uh, kind of interesting how uh, these, uh, my professional life and my evocation have uh, kind of blended together in many ways. 
Very good. And and let me ask just with your experience and, and your many years, you, you have me beat. We were talking before the show uh, by a couple of years and kudos to you. It's always exciting to hear somebody who utilizes the FOIA. But on top of that, starting at such a young age, uh, you said that you had started at 13, which is uh, which I is, did. I yeah. filed a FOIA request uh, asking for information on something I had heard about from a neighbor. And it was an uh, agency called the National Reconnaissance Office, or NRO. And uh, keep in mind, this is in the mid-'70s, when the NRO was not acknowledged as an agency. Mm-hmm. It so happens that uh, one of my neighbor's uh, fathers uh, worked for the NRO, and uh, I had to find out what reconnaissance meant and how to spell it even. <laughs> uh, and uh, I put in a FOIA request asking for information on the National Reconnaissance Organization, or NRO. Uh, and uh, I remember uh, the FOIA completely. In fact, it's on my website. Uh, I retained it all of these decades. They denied that such an office existed. Back in the mid-'70s, through FOIA, which I don't have a lot of faith in, John, FOIA uh, requested uh, basically told me that uh, the response, rather, to my request was that such an office did not exist, that there was no NRO. Of course, today we know that there is and that uh, they lied to us. Great story about the NRO with them existing for so long. It really does go to show you that not only will the government lie about all of this stuff, but th- have things funded and fully operational for decades, and the general public doesn't even know. But uh, that's that's, right. that's a whole different show in itself. But it so, surely is. So based, uh, I live here in Florida, and I could tell you about some retirees who have worked at the NSA that have told me things you couldn't believe. Uh, a lady who is a neighbor who has since passed uh, worked for the NSA. And for 30 years, could not tell her own uh, family that Mm -hmm. she worked for them. She said that they worked, uh, 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 used a different name entirely, I forget what it was, uh, wherever the mountain is that they put the NSA in, that's where she went. And she never even told her own husband that she had worked for the NSA for decades until they acknowledged the existence of the agency. Yeah, uh, secrecy is is such an amazing thing when you start getting into those types of details that not many people would even know about or think about that that's what they have to do and the lengths they have to go. Uh, but let me let me ask you just to kind of set the stage here about your personal beliefs, and I don't know the answer to this question. Um, with your experience of having the sighting that you did and the years of research that you've had, the people that you've met, the things that you've seen, are you 100 per, per, 100% convinced that this phenomena is truly an, an alien phenomena, extraterrestrial? Uh, well, it's uh, not an easy question to answer because certainly there are classified uh, um, research that is terrestrial, very terrestrial, mm-hmm. that might appear extraterrestrial to those that aren't aware uh, of that kind of research. Uh, and I'm in a unique position to understand that in that I find um, the folks that design many of the aircraft that won't be seen for 20 or 30 years from now, John. Uh, so, uh, and in fact, the way in which I recruit in that area is, is another story. Uh, and I think it dovetails into the FOIA thing very nicely. But uh, yeah, I, I uh, happen to believe that uh, there is an alien presence, but I am not prepared to say it's extraterrestrial or ultra-terrestrial. Uh, there is something uh, that is not from here that comes here. Okay, good. And and I appreciate you kind of setting that stage just so we get an idea of where you're coming from. Now, yeah. let's get into your recent headlines uh, here that you have written. And that brings you and I together here on this show, but also uh, with some conversations elsewhere on the internet and so on. And mm-hmm. that's why I wanted to bring you on just to kind of get away from that social media drama and mm-hmm. uh, and bring you aboard and 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 kind of get your side. Now, can you summarize your FOIA request and what you got, and yeah, ultimately I'm what you to do believe? that for you? Yeah. Yes, please. And for your listeners, uh, uh, back in 2017, uh, I made a FOIA request uh, to the DIA, the Defense Intelligence Agency, uh, asking for uh, physical descriptions and properties and composition of UFO or UAP, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Material, that was held by the government and by its contractor, uh, Bigelow Aerospace. And I became aware of this because, as you know, John, about 2017, late 2017, the New York Times, uh, Leslie Keene 
uh, had an article that uh, talked about uh, a previously covert uh, UFO study program called AATIP, uh, and uh, buried within the article was a mention of anomalous debris being held at Bigelow Aerospace in Las Vegas, in, uh, Nevada, and uh, that there had been uh, specialized, uh, rather modified facilities uh, that were to contain this material. I couldn't really understand why folks weren't talking about that more, so I filed a FOIA requesting the debris test results. And the FOIA that I, uh, re uh, the FOIA request uh, was very specific, uh, and it uh, requested uh, test information on physical debris recovered by personnel of the Department of Defense as residue or flotsam or shot-off material or uh, crashed material uh, from UAPs or from UFOs. And the documentation that I requested was very specific uh, and only mentioned UFOs, UAPs, debris, and Bigelow Aerospace. Uh, at no time whatsoever was the word weapons, weaponry, advanced weapons, weapons programs ever mentioned within the FOIA request. Uh, and uh, so it related only to UFOs only to crash debris, only to Bigelow Aerospace testing that debris. Uh, it probably was one, and I'm sure you'd agree, one of the most specific FOIA requests uh, written. It so uh, let me, was clear, it can, was unambiguous. Yeah, and let me jump uh, in, and Tony. And it was responded to in kind. And, and let me, uh, and I don't mean to step on you, uh, because I want you to finish no, that. No, no. Uh, but for those listening and watching, do you mind if I read your, your item list? Uh uh, the uh, FOIA? Yeah, I've not. got your Anything FOIA. on there you can read. Yep, no problem. I want to make sure everybody, we're all on the same page. So this is Tony's original FOIA request. I'm flashing it on screen for those that are watching uh, as you were talking. And uh, and I want to go through the, because uh, you're right, it was very detailed and, and uh, nothing wrong about it uh, when it comes to the structure of the FOIA. So that's not where I'm going with any of this, but I want to read what you wrote. So Tony requested the following. Number one. Physical description of all held material. Number two, source of origin of all held material. Number three, circumstance and method of obtainment of all held material, i.e. float sam residue, shot off material, crash material. Number four, custodian U.S. government agency of all held material. Number five, the title and authors of all technical and analytical reports conducted on all held material. Number six, Names of private contractors to the U.S. government engaged in the storage and study of all held material. Number seven, test results on UAP recovered material to include physical properties, chemical, and elemental composition of material and determination of the material as of terrestrial or extraterrestrial origin. Thank you for bearing with me uh, on that, Tony, because I want to make sure that we're as clear sure. as possible. So uh, let me pass it back to you. So you said that they responded in kind uh, to your FOIA request. They did, and uh, they understood that it only referred to UFOs, UAP, Bigelow, debris. All those key words were... Uh, 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 in the, uh, the FOIA official that responded, Steve Tomiski, who heads up uh, FOIA for the DIA, uh, was the one that responded uh, to uh, my request, and he attached uh, 151 pages of technical papers in response to that request. Right. So that leads us then to the headline that you had written, that the Pentagon had admitted to uh, UFO debris and release the test results. Now, uh, when I had contacted the Pentagon, and I know you, you didn't like their, their statement, and I don't blame you, uh, but I know you didn't like their statement, they had told me that the FOIA request was amended. So I had gone back to you, and to your credit, you had sent me the back and forth between you and the DIA. Now, for those uh, in the audience, Amendments on FOIAs are, are very, very common. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and in fact, it's actually encouraged. You get things sometimes quicker. Uh, so, you know, none of that is out of the ordinary. What it amended to, and correct me if I'm wrong, Tony, 
was that it seems like from the emails that there were telephone conversations and then a follow up of uh, confirmation from the DIA. Absolutely. And I can right. speak to that very directly. Please. Even Tomiski, uh, who is the Chief's Records Management and Information Services Officer for the DIA, and I had several phone conversations which are alluded to in the uh, emails, which are included in the articles uh, that I have online. And Stephen was very clear that I was referring to UFOs and UAPs. I told Stephen that I didn't want to play games, that if he was going to send me uh, material from the AATIP, but it really was with another program similarly named as AAWSA, help me there, John. OSAP, yeah, Advanced right. Aerospace Weapon System uh, that, uh, Applications Those kind program. of games wouldn't be tolerated, that he understands completely what I'm referring to that the program has gone under different names, that I am referring to UFO material. Stephen Tominsky, to me, specifically said he understood the request and that he would get the material I seek. Right. So here would be my only friendly... So he was not under any... At no time did the DIA ever mention to me the word weapon or weaponry. Um, So I don't know where this is coming from, well, uh, at all, uh, yeah. other than the fact that I think that, uh, as you know, John, they are one and the same. Sure. Uh, I think that we're actually if both you're, if correct. You're, if, you're ta- if you're talking about, you're talking about... As well as to extraterrestrial materials research. And this is what has made it so very difficult to penetrate the many layers uh, of this whole issue. Um, and um, I'm not saying that it doesn't have to do with weaponry. In fact... Wouldn't that be the very first place that you would uh, look to place this material? Would be for military applications. Sure. sure. I mean, it's very simple. The Wright brothers, when they created the airplane, 10 years later, we had guns on them. We were using them in warfare. So it's, um, there's a history of this. Yeah. I, I mean, the, 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 the program name when it comes to OSAP, and, and this, is, this has been a gripe of mine for quite some time on the, on the government side of their naming mechanisms, in that it depends on who you listen to on whether or not OSAP and ATIP were the same. You have those that have claimed to work on, or, or that worked on it, excuse me. We know that Dr. Hal Putoff worked on it through Bigelow Aerospace. He said ATIP was a nickname. Uh, Mr. Luis Elizondo, who says that he headed the program, said that they were two separate programs. According to the Pentagon, you have story number three, which is uh, OSAP was an offshoot of ATIP, and OSAP was the contracted out. So, uh, again, this is is so confusing. He's so very direct because of precisely what you just said. I didn't want to play games with acronyms or program names. He full well knew what I was referring to. Uh, There's no doubt. In fact, I'll bet this man is in a lot of hot water. I'm sure you'd agree. Uh, He, uh, in fact, in his response to me, refers to UAP material. He refers to Bigelow Aerospace. Uh, John, I talked to the man directly, and I referred to it in the emails that are included in the uh, articles that I've uh, written uh, there is no doubt whatsoever that Steve Tominsky understood my request thoroughly to mean unidentified flying objects or unidentified aerial phenomena, that I was referring to debris from those, and I was referring to debris that was stored at Bigelow. Right. Uh, he understood it completely. There was no ambiguity whatsoever, and I'm perplexed at the whole thing, because if I asked you for a turkey dinner and you gave me a hot dog, that's not what I asked for. And, what if it was uh, a turkey for hot them dog? to come back and say, well, this has to do with weapons, not with the UFOs, is ridiculous. It's outrageous. Well, let me let me jump in. Uh, and and I don't I don't think I'm going to convince you on this, but at least if you could indulge me for a moment. Absolutely. Where I think the the confusion comes from is item number 5 on your original request. And that is the titles and authors of all technical and analytical reports conducted on all held material. Now, hold on, bear with me here. When you do a multi-list FOIA like this, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, You did everything right. I'm not saying that you did anything wrong. However, those lists are in a legal sense or, not and, meaning it doesn't have to apply to numbers one, two. Oh, jeez, John, come on. 
I know where you're I, going with I've that. I've got ridiculous. This man knew fully well what I was referring to. Oh, okay, just now bear with me. Now you said that it's in his letter. But if you read, and here's the letter, I've got it here. And again, in the interest of accuracy, let me just read that one part because you're out, you're right on what he said. Uh, this was the official response to you. This response to your Freedom of Information Act request dated December 27, 2017, that you submitted to the Defense Intelligence Agency for information. Con- okay, <clears throat> excuse me, for information concerning requesting all information on test results from the UAP material from Bigelow Aerospace. Now, if that sounds weird to everybody, it's because it is, and I even got tongue-tied reading it. The requesting all information is, in my opinion, a copy and paste. Do you agree with that? No. Okay. But that... No, I do not, John. In fact, that why was, doesn't was it very make perplexing sense? to me. You're talking about a response on a very serious issue, and unless these people have issues with basic uh, reading comprehension... Uh, I can't understand how anyone could misunderstand my request. It's so clearly written. Uh, there is no ambiguity. Okay, so and I don't understand what you're talking about about sure. cut and paste whatsoever. No, I'm 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 happy to explain. <laughs> John, that. and there's, there's some other things I wanted to talk to you about and bring up. A wait, really wait, wait! Before we here. get too far okay. ahead, hold on. I, you you have yeah, all the yeah. time that you'd like. Don't. I'm not trying to cut you off, but I want to make sure we don't get too jumped around here. So just to kind of finalize this thought, because like I said, I don't expect to convince you. But after seeing thousands and thousands of these letters, most of the time they have a summation of a FOIA request, especially multi-item ones, in their not only internal working logs, if they are differed from the FOIA case logs that they will give out. And a lot of times they will they will summarize a, a, a you know, a multi seven, eight, 10, 12. I've seen 30 items on a request, not by myself, but uh, in FOIA logs and stuff like that to where then they, they just kind of condense it. And in my opinion, when you have the capitalization, the way that it is, and the fact that uh, when you talk about grammar and comprehension, it doesn't make sense. And it's like they have a template. Uh, I just got a letter the other day. I tweeted it out. It's unrelated to this, uh, but it's my same point where it said, Dear XXXXX, that was my FOIA response. Now, that's not my name, obviously, but they use templates. They copy and paste. So so let's move beyond that because, again, I don't expect you to be convinced of it. But that, at all, at all. Which is, which is, which is fine. Uh, because I'm the one who actually talked to the man. You see, you didn't. I actually talked to Stephen Tominsky. I was yeah. as direct with him as I am with you right now. Okay. There was no ambiguity whatsoever. He knew exactly what I was referring to. And why in the world would they uh, elect to send to me, in response to my request, 151 pages of highly technical information uh, without understanding that this had to do with UFOs? Well, It makes no sense whatsoever. Let me bring up I, another... I really am truly perplexed. Sure. Well, let me... uh, and also, John, I, I must interrupt here and explain mm-hmm. to your reader or your listeners that uh, you made it sound like I was not aware that these were unclassified documents. You made it seem to your listeners like I was unaware that these uh, materials were published over a decade ago. But in fact, that isn't true. In my very first article, I talked about that very thing. In fact, I showed a text block with the data on it. Wait, can I ask you to I had even said that this material had been published on small websites, including George Knapp's in the past. So when you started to tell folks that, oh, these were unclassified materials and, oh, these had already been released, well, that really took a lot of the wind out of the sail, didn't it? But it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that this has to do with the response to a request on UFOs. And I made it very clear to everybody that this material had been out there, that it had been unclassified. Yet you made it sound to your viewers like I was trying to pull one over on everybody. No, 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 no. Uh, yes, on John, the... that's the way it came off. Well, in fact, the video uh, hey, that you had is called Nails in the Coffin. Cur- well, we haven't gotten and, there yet. And that is yet. not a very nice <laughs> title. Well, but... uh, In fact, the very day that that, uh, I'm going to tell you something, John, the very mm-hmm. day that the Nails in the Coffin video uh, came up, my aunt died of COVID. So the, the word nails in a coffin and not calling me or contacting me before you put that video on, 
I'd like you to tell listeners why we're doing this now and why you didn't contact me before. Oh, that's you put easy. Up the first video. I be well. First and foremost, my condolences. I mean, if if you think that that was some kind of shot on something I didn't even know about, but in the age of COVID, we don't talk like that right now. It was pretty clear that it was about a story, but if you took it that way, I mean, I clearly don't know about what happened to your family. Of course, family. you didn't. And but my uh, you know, we can't assume anything, and I don't right. use language like that. Well, he, and then I can here's, be pretty hyperbolic, as you know. But right. that was really beyond the pale. Right, but to be honest with you, uh, you know, that was never an intent. But if that's how you took it, then I sincerely apologize. I appreciate but, that, John. But uh, it, it's pretty, in my opinion, was pretty clear I was referencing nails in the coffin of a story, and we will get to those in a couple minutes because we haven't even talked about them. Um, but I'm happy to, to, to address your question to me, and I'll address any ones that you'd like, on why I did that video without contacting you. You had did, and to your credit, and I even complimented you on this, you had published everything. So there was nothing that I could go after with you because a phone call is not going to change my mind. Um, and I'm sorry to say that, but I mean, unless you handed me a recording and Stephen uh, Tomolsky from DIA said, yep, that's my voice then great, we can deal with that. But obviously, a phone call is not going to change anything. But it was never stated in your original reporting that you had amended the request. And yes, that actually does change things. I, I did not amend the Hold request. Hold on, Tony, I See, let that, you that's talk. That's the whole point. I don't know where you got that either. That's misinformation. You amended the request I never for amended the request. Release. They I have the thought email. I had asked for everything about AATIP. And I, I reminded Stephen that, no, I'm only asking about test results. So don't put me in with all the others. That's what happened. Yes, so I don't hold know on. what you're referring to about amending. Sure. So here's from DIA to you. This is what you sent to me. Um, this is from Stephen Tomiski. Please excuse me if there's been a misunderstanding. I had understood and you had confirmed in our last email exchange that you accepted narrowing your scope to, quote, test. Okay. But I never accepted it. I was the original request, as you know. Okay. Hold on, Tony. So that, I'm, 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 try, I'm trying. It, it's I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to read this. Not I, if I was paraphrasing, I can understand your frustration. But let me at least tell the viewers and, and audience what was said. So you had, according to DIA's message to you, uh, accepted narrowing your scope to test results from the UAP material from Bigelow Aerospace under contract. I, I have to interrupt you, John. I'd never accepted anything that was uh, the original request. Well, well, Tony, if you'll let me keep going here, uh, this is okay. the, this is the letter. This is what you sent me, and I'm just trying to give everybody a little bit of background. I, I will give you all the time in the world that you would like, um, but if I could just finish what you had sent me, because uh, again, I don't like to paraphrase when uh, whenever I have a disagreement with a guest. So uh, I'll say again, uh, according to the email from DIA. Uh, you accepted narrowing your scope to test results from UAP material from Bigelow Aerospace under contract to the DOD slash Pentagon, your confirmation per the thread below. Now you responded, your email uh, looks like 18 minutes after he sent that, you said, yes, that is the general request. Quote, test results from the UAP material from Bigelow Aerospace under contract to the DOD Pentagon However, the specifics of that request were also included in the original 2017 exactly. request to Stephen. Right. Now, from, so now let me paraphrase and correct me if I'm wrong. With all of that said, because I don't want to get into the weeds of reading every single <laughs> email here, uh, but you had agreed to a rolling release. Is that correct? Uh, I agreed to getting the information I requested. Correct. So, so in order for him to... I don't care how they got it to me. When they got it to me, sooner the better. Okay. So, right. So, so in the legal sense, that's called a rolling release. So, and that's... Well, whatever it's called. Okay. Uh, and we can talk about it and use different words, but what, what, uh, bottom line is the man that, knew what I was looking for. I'm, I'm not... I mean, I'm we're, not, we're playing around here. You're talking no, about No, 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 not at all. Um, it, it is uh, as clear as uh, the nose on my face. Well, you, you said that I was using different words and using what I uh, want to call well, it. Well, uh, because releases we have the original email. Freedom of Information Act request. I understand that, but it was amended. I, you know, it, it never asked for everything about AATIP. There was never a request for amendment. I haven't seen where you're referring to that, about you asking for everything about ATIP. So, so that Exactly. And that's what he thought I was. I, I don't know. But even I from his know. words. I so I'm not sure about that side of it. You didn't send me any of that. And that's okay. That's I'm not arguing any of that. 
Uh, but what I am trying to go for here uh, is my one last point, if I can get to it, because you said that you published these emails and it's okay for me to ask about them. You, of course He's, are, of course. He said uh, the, let me see here. Where is it? Where is it? Here it is. Uh, this is from Stephen to you. I am not concerned with your statements regarding press or legal actions. I have dealt and will continue to deal with you in good faith, and I hope that you will do so with me. Now, may I ask for clarification, because nowhere did you send me anything where you had talked about a legal action other than what you posted? Oh, I actually did, though, John. No, no, that's I why I'm, that's why I'm asking two Tony. attorneys that I'm consulting no. about that very thing. Okay, hold on. Let, then let me finish that thought. What I was trying to say was not the one that you posted after. I'm talking about when you were communicating with the oh, DIA. Oh, I see. Uh, let me clarify. Yes. John, in the conversation I had with Stephen, I said, Stephen, I'm of means. I'm able to hire uh, the best attorneys in the nation specializing in FOIA. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. if, there, if I'm sensing any kind of delay or distraction or anything like that, I'm prepared to uh, take legal action and have already consulted uh, and interviewed two attorneys in the D.C. area. Great. So you you uh, because after three and a half years, and then him sending me back uh, a, a letter of lies that I'm amending and requesting all information on AATIP, which of course is not correct. Uh, I felt that I had to uh, push the up button, and if it required uh, legal assistance, uh, I can do it. Great. Okay. So that and that's totally fair. Uh, so with all of that being said. You were telling him you didn't want to play word games. You were telling him that there's potential legal action. All of that, fine. I'm not harping on you for it. You don't think that he was trying to be uh, transparent because that number five in your FOIA request, which did not mention UAPs or UFOs, but talked about, hold on, Tony, let hear me out. Okay, uh, you know what I'm thinking. It's funny. So number five, you didn't mention UFOs or UAPs in a legal sense. It's not and it's or meaning it doesn't have to include every item on your list. You, uh, again, stipulated you didn't want these games that you were upset uh, because he apologized a couple times in these emails. He sure did. You, uh, which great. I mean, I, I, I don't employ that tactic, but if that worked for you, awesome. But it did, but didn't do it? You, and well, there you no. go, too, John. You I and I, uh, if I can finish, in, in Tony. a totally different way. I, but You're you an archivist. To, you I'm need, a journalist. You need to let me at least finish uh, the I thought, am Tony. a little bit more forward and bold than you are. I think you acquiesce to these folks because you want to be an archivist. You want to maintain your relationship as the black vault to the government agencies, and therefore you have to be very careful about how you approach these folks and the relationship that you maintain with them. I don't have that obligation or that interest. My interest is only in truth. Okay. If you're insinuating that my interest is not, then you don't know. No, me no, no, no. Well. I but didn't say that. Now, I said now, that my interest is now in that truth. You, now I didn't that, say that yours wasn't. Right. I simply said that I think that you tend to kowtow to these folks and don't want to in any way disrupt your relationship with them by being forward or bold like I am. Do you, do, what, what relationship do you think I have? I mean, I've filed... Uh, over 10,000 requests. Uh, I have archived 2.4 million pages. I've tried to do through uh, FOIA appeals and so on and so forth, uh, getting these documents. I think you're too trusting of these people, John. Well, I I'm not really sure what to tell you with that because uh, most of the time I'm not even dealing with spokespeople. But on top of that, out of 10,000 requests, I pretty much understand how their templating works. I know how that part of the system works. Uh, why can't you be open to the fact that maybe under threat of a lawsuit and him trying to be a little bit transparent uh, with you so you, you can't accuse him of playing games, he gave you material that met your requirements of item number five on your request. So you have completely shut that down. But why? I, I really still, after all this time, I still don't. And sincerely, I don't get what you're talking about. Well, we can move I on. I don't understand uh, but it. Let me, I'll give you a, it. I, sure, I I'll don't. Give, I'll give you an example. I did a FOIA request to the U.S. Army asking for all UFO material and use some of the keywords like flying saucers and this and that. That was my request. Okay. I sent that in and I received hundreds of pages as a response to a request for UFO information and flying saucers. Okay. That's what I requested. 
However, in there was the majority, uh, the majority of what was in there was uh, schematics from the Nazi Horton brothers and a flying wing design. Now, would it be fair for me, Tony, to say that the Horton brothers uh, design was all UFO or flying saucer in relation to extraterrestrials? Would that be fair? Oh, uh, I don't know enough about the FOIA request. I'd have to see it, view it, view the replies. I'm not going to comment I sent on something it to you. that I don't know enough about like that, John. Well, I sent all it I to know you. is the, the FOIA that I, received, that I re, uh, uh, requested uh, and the reply that I received only refer to UFOs, UAPs, and Bigelow, and debris. And we really need to hone in on why they would be talking about weaponry. Uh, and why would they choose these 151 pages to send to me when they could have sent me anything from anywhere at any time? Why? They chose you stipulated 151 OSAP. pages that relate to exotic materials that can induce invisibility, compress electromagnetic energy, uh, can... Um, perform shape memory uh, properties uh, similar to the material found at Roswell, which is an extraordinary coincidence. Why would they send that to me? Of all the things in the world they could send to me, why would they send me 151 pages uh, which were authorized by the DIA's ufologist? Uh, and it's an incredible thing. Uh, he was both a rocket scientist and the UFO point person for the DIA, uh, David Lekatsky. When I found James, out that he was the one James that Lekatsky. was the program manager that authorized all of these 151 pages, I was floored. And I can't believe that you aren't. The very man who authorized the release of these, uh, or rather the um, initiation of these uh, studies and who created these papers is also a UFO point person for the DIA, or was, okay. until he was forced out. The Okay, can I ask you to clarify because and, I and folks, by the way, if you want to see that it's an article that incorrect. appears on my website ufoexplorations.com, dot uh, com, you can read all about it. But it kind of closes the circle. The fact is that all of the material that was sent to me was uh, approved by the DIA's UFO point person. Okay, so let me jump in there because there's nothing, and I want to ask you to support that with evidence. But the man who actually was in charge of the OSAP program, which in the DIA's eyes, they lumped together OSAP and ATIP, whether they were officially separate programs or not. At this point, it's irrelevant to our conversation. However, Dr. Hal Putoff was the lead scientist and engineer for Bigelow Aerospace's Bass, and he has gone on the record and nobody has disputed that it was him that chose the topics of the DIRDs, and it was him that farmed it out. Now, James... His Lek name does not appear on it. David Lekatsky's does. It's James uh, Interestingly enough, and I want viewers to know James, this, James the Lekatsky. material that I received redacted David Lekatsky's name. Correct. Yet it had been out there for many years and in different formats on different websites. On a leak. Very, leak. very that curious. Was, I think everyone would agree. I think you're reading uh, And then that. we find out that, in fact, Lekatsky was kicked out or uh, forced out because of his belief that this was extraterrestrial in origin. And others didn't like the conclusions that he was reaching. He left government service and is now retired and wants nothing to do with anyone. Right. However, uh, nobody's ever named Lekatsky. So you're referencing Elizondo. Now, here's the deal. I actually probably think... I'm not uh, referencing anything. It's on the document. Uh, the unredacted document uses his name and shows him as the program manager. Right. On DIA's side... And isn't that incredible? It's just extraordinary really uh it can be extraordinary that's great but he's not the one that made the dirts and if you want to just doesn't matter he's the program manager he's the guy whose name appears on all of the documents john uh, it does it i mean it, and i don't know about hal Puttoff. he's got a history which uh i don't want to get too much in the weeds but i would not uh trust hal Puttoff as far as i could throw him well, since we're on Hal, uh, he chimed in as well. And again, I mean, it doesn't sound like you believe I'm it. I'm not but... prepared to talk about Hal. I'm prepared to talk about this FOIA. Well, but but he Hal was the one that chose the topics of those this. FOIA. I don't know anything about him other than he's not a reliable, credible, and many people have big okay. issues with him. Well, you, uh, this you gentleman, might want David to... David Lekatsky is the real deal. Okay, I'm going to... I'm going to have to... deal. Okay, it's James Lekatsky. Uh, James, excuse me, James yeah, Lekatsky. Right, okay. And oh, you sorry. may want to look into Dr. Hal Putoff because, again, it's not disputed that he was the one that chose the topics. 
the quotes that you're citing. I don't see his name Tony, on that you're going to have to let other people talk. I mean, I, where I, where is the material? Where is his name on the material? Where's because here's, you're making things up. I I don't see his name on this material. I'll show it to you. He he authored multiple dirds. Oh, he he authored some of these, but the program manager was Lukatsky. It does. I don't care about the DIA side. I'm talking about what Bass created, and I think that this goes into the bigger confusion on what Bass did in the private sector for their contract. Was Lekatsky involved? Yes. I'm probably not even going to argue with you on that at all because I agree with you. The problem is, is that you can't say that Lekatsky was the UFO point guy because nobody has said that. And on top of it, it wasn't him that chose the dirds. And if you think that it was great, all I'm looking for is evidence. But no one has said that it was him. You had cited in your article that Elizondo was talking about uh, Lekatsky. You had talked about Senator Harry Reid was talking about Lekatsky. But you have to admit, those were assumptions. There's no quote where they named Lekatsky, right? Dr. James Lekatsky is a DIA rocket scientist and a ufologist. Dr. Lekatsky's conclusions about UFOs cost him his job. Louis Elizondo knows that. Did, did, did Elizondo go on the record Elizondo and say had, Lekatsky? Me, had said that certain senior government officials thought our collection of facts on UAP was dangerous to their philosophical beliefs. In fact, my AATIP predecessor's career was ruined because of misplaced fear by an elite few. Rather than accept the data as provided by a top-ranked science, rocket scientist, they decided the data was a threat to their belief systems and instead destroyed his career because of it. Where did he say Lekatsky? What do you mean? Well, because according to Mr. Elizondo, ATIP and OSAP were two wildly different programs. So his predecessor on ATIP... Well, when Harry Reid said uh, that uh, he had been visited by the PhD rocket scientist of the DIA, who do you think he was referring to? It, but but that's irrelevant. It doesn't well, matter. It does, you know, and again, we can go I out in the weeds on this, but uh, I'm, I'm quite certain that Dr. Lekatsky was involved in AATIP, I'm quite certain that he went to Bigelow Aerospace. I'm quite certain he went to the Skinwalker Ranch. That, that's, um, that's fine, Tony. But where I'm going with this is I don't necessarily agree. If I can finish the sentence and the thought, I don't necessarily disagree with you. That's what I've been trying to say for 10 minutes. I don't necessarily think you're wrong, but you've jumped to too many conclusions on whether or not Lekatsky is truly the guy. And then on top of that, and I mean no offense, you're saying the wrong name. And on top of that, you don't even want to know. Well, James Hold Lekatsky, on a James second. Lekatsky, okay. You uh -huh. don't even want to deal with the guy who actually was involved on the Bigelow Aerospace side who was in charge of all the dirds. Now, for the record, and, and that's fine. So let's move on. We don't have to keep beating the dead horse. Your headline, and, and I want you to explain that, uh, this one to me. Your headline when you had talked about Lekatsky was Pentagon's UFO debris study manager found ET connection confirmed. Where is the ET connection confirmed? I'm not following you. Well, that's your headline. You wrote that. Right. Right? But, yes. Okay. So where's the confirmation of ET? I'm not understanding what you mean. Okay, so uh, you wrote this, sir. So uh, ET connection confirmed. Tells My name me, is Tony. I, I'm sorry. I, I said, sir, is that an insult? Um, anyway, I, I apologize. Tony, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I've grown up trying to show respect to people. But regardless, you wrote the connection ET, or excuse me, the headline ET connection confirmed. You wrote yes. that, not me. Yes. So yes, he what was is the study manager. Lekatsky was the study manager for both the AATIP as well as for UFO work. That is correct. Great. That is the Where's, connection. Okay. No, ET. You said ET, extraterrestrial connection confirmed. Well, what are we confirmed? thinking that these are terrestrial materials? Uh, absolutely, they could be. Okay. And that's where you and I differ. And okay. this is where the central problem is. In some way, you believe that they were going to provide to me... Uh, chemical and elemental analysis on u unique materials. What they did is uh, provide to me uh, the uh, applications of these materials. And that's why I want to uh, uh, initiate a lawsuit, because they did not uh, reply to my FOIA request 
in the way that I had requested. Okay, so there can, many can things you just that are, are not included, and that's exactly why I wanted to move forward. Because I want to make sure that I understand you. If you could, as as quickly as you can, because I don't I don't know how much more time I have. A lot of is ten minutes, seven but or eight minutes here. Okay, so then let me rush through this. Then, what is the the what it what makes the meta material analysis alien? I, do, you have a, do you have a lot of time? I mean, this is so very deep uh, that I, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, you can, you can uh, summarize alien the, material. The, it has to be the, something. The impetus of this material is alien-inspired. It's not in and of itself alien, and this is where the problem is. Okay, so where's the inspiration we're about, coming from? John, we were talking about an event that happened 70 years ago. The folks that are involved in scientific wor- work on this kind of thing weren't even born then. Um, over the decades, this kind of work has been blended into aero research and uh, weaponry research uh, and artfully done. Uh, they've they blended it in, so it's very, very difficult to separate the two. But when you look at the material that is uh, referred to in, uh, uh, and that was sent to me, we're talking about material that exactly matches that of UFOs. The ability to become invisible, the ability to morph, the ability to compress energy. Uh, All of these kind of things are UFO-like. But that doesn't make it alien. What I'm looking for is the confirmation. I'm not saying, John, see, this is the problem. Where's the inspiration? You said inspired by. I received uh, an elemental analysis or chemical analysis of alien material. That's evident. It's so obvious. These these are... this is information gleaned from decades of work okay. on material that was recovered. I don't know how more clear I can be about so, it. So is this all one of because the it's inspired by was, Roswell? Uh, I'll make it very clear here. Sure. Uh, one of the um, uh, reports received was about nitinol, sometimes called nitinol, shape memory alloys, very similar to the debris recovered at Roswell. Uh, I have uh, uh, actually cre- uh, created a table of... 40 witnesses to memory metal found at Roswell. For them to to then send back to me uh, about 12 to 15 pages on uh, shape memory alloy used in the human body as a biomaterial was more than curious. Why would they send me information about shape memory alloys and memory metal, much like found at Roswell? Well, because those were, because that's, that's responsive to your request, uh, and it's exactly. enough. Exactly. Okay, but but I think you're you're and not you do know there's a long finish. history about memory metal, and that is a whole other issue. We could take another hour or even three hours about. Well, but as re, as listeners know or may know, uh, I have uh, worked on the memory metal issue for years and years, and the um, fact that they sent back to me. Uh, very advanced technical papers on using memory metal in the human system as a biomaterial was extraordinary. Yeah, but I mean, and again, that's the root of all of this that you don't want to look at, which if Dr. Hal Putoff truly had that intent when he brought up the topic, you Hal you Putoff has no idea why he was working on this. Why would a man in I 2021 think... know about material recovered in 1947? Uh, I'm, this, I'm, this is ET-inspired research that which, is done under the cover of aerospace and weapons research. These folks have no need to know about Roswell. They have no need to know whatsoever about the circumstances involving the recovery, how it was obtained, where it's been held. All of that is ancillary. So, so in the last couple of minutes, just so I can, and again, I can urge you, I'll give you more time if you want it, but you're putting it Well, we're going to have time on Wednesday. You'll tell folks about that. Sure. Uh, that being said, uh, I know your apparent disregard for Dr. Hal put off, which is fine. Uh, the Pentagon, obviously, you're not siding with. Uh, but the 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 man who headed the bass has uh, come out and, and said they never had any material. Uh, you're the one that wrote the headline about UFO debris. It sounds like you might be trying to shift that a little bit with saying that it's no. inspired by... No. Okay, so they had UFO debris as your claim. Really quickly, because I'm running out of time. Uh, absolutely. I uh, 100% okay, so they have the UFO US government debris. has been in uh, possession of UFO debris for at least 70 years. Right, through OSAP, through these reports, is what you're saying. That was your headline. 
I'm saying that, that the material received confirms this. Okay, so we've already dealt with like, I'm, I'm trying to get where the confirmation is, but we don't get it. But, but, but you're saying that Dr. Hal put off the Pentagon, who actually agreed. Uh, with I, don't I, I, don't I, under, know, I don't know about Hal put off. I understand that. If All I, I know is that thing. I requested information on UFO debris, and this is what I got. Well, uh, again, item number five didn't mention UFOs, but, but yeah, I, I don't, I will not agree with you on that. I don't understand Which is fine. that. I, we could talk about it for hours, probably. So do uh, you Steve th Kaminsky and the DIA full well knew I was requesting information on UFOs or UAPs and on debris. Everyone that has read the request, everyone that has read the reply agrees it's unambiguous and that to say anything else is misinforming. Well, I, I mean, I have to ask this question because I feel in situations like this, and, and I commend you for getting the documents I have since day one. I think they're important to come out officially. I think they were misinterpreted. Do you think that there is a chance that you are misinterpreting? Kind of, I mean, you have the Roswell slides no, history. No, I think there. it's so unambiguous. Uh, no, I was the fellow that talked to the DIA FOIA chief. Uh, I'm the one who heard his responses. He knew full well I was looking for UFO material. And, and John, you just don't, it's almost like um, we're talking past each other. Where in the world did I ever request information on weapons? I, again, I'm, I haven't asked you about weapons. Uh, well, we've well, already well, talked no, about I'm the confusion you about weapons. Where did I request information on advanced weaponry? Uh, uh, okay, see, that's, that's can you a, answer that for me? Where is I'm it that I requested about information? Weapons, so no, on advanced I don't have to weaponry. clarify. Um, so you can ask the DIA that, but regardless, it was no. A, I'm asking you because you've been reading all of the material more than anyone except me. You've really gone through it, and I commend you for having done that. Where have I ever mentioned the word weapons, weaponry, or advanced weapons program? But but where did I ask you about uh, that? Uh, uh, where did it, where is it? Uh, if you can talk Do about, you see it? If I could talk, I don't know. I mean, you want people to finish. I'm, a I'm waiting to hear from you. Uh, well, uh, if you allow me to, the OSAP original bid solicit solicitation talked about advanced aerospace uh, aerospace. Uh, platforms, forward-looking no, programs. Where was my hey, mention Tony, of weaponry? Tony, you got to let other sides speak if you want them to answer a question. And I'm trying to answer it for you. Going back 30, 40 minutes ago when we started talking about OSAP, I was the one that brought up how confusing these naming mechanisms are because really when you look at the description for ATIP or excuse me, for OSAP, and it talks about advanced aerospace platforms and technology forward looking into the future by 40 years that may or may not apply to weapons, but it sure didn't seem it was primarily about weapons. It seemed like it was primarily about aerospace research. Hence my concern, hold on, Tony, hence my concern and has been for quite some time that this had anything to do with UFOs in the first place. You keep dismissing Dr. Hal Putoff, but to be honest with you, it actually may play a role. You guys might even find an intersection somewhere with you thinking that this is inspired by something. I'm not speaking for him, but the fact that you didn't even talk to him is kind of telling that you didn't want ultimately the whole truth. You keep talking about truth. Oh my heavens, I would be careful there, John. Then why haven't you talked uh, to the you, guy you who was in charge of it? You just said, I Absolutely. didn't want the whole truth. So why do you think that I talked to uh, the Pentagon? I, I don't, this, this Hal Putoff guy, listen, I don't know what you're referring to here. I'm talking about material that I received from the DIA, from Stephen Tominsky, and um, then the Pentagon backpedaling through their uh, Pentagon spokesperson, Sue Goff. 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 Uh, and, uh, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced it. Uh, so that's all I can talk about is what I received, well, and all I know I about that is that what I asked for. And I think that that's and I never my asked point. about anything to do with weapons. I asked about UFOs. I don't know why I you're never asked for anything weapons. about advanced weapons programs per se. I asked for information on UFO debris. And when I received this material, it was, was that understanding. Uh, it couldn't be more clear, and I am really perplexed how you can even um, defend or uh, try to have people understand why they would provide to me this material, and then backpedal and say it had nothing to do with UFOs when that's all I talked about. Uh, look, it would be I, like I, going to a restaurant and asking for a turkey dinner, and they give you a hot dog. 
I, 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 that's the second time you've used your hot dog analogy, Absolutely. and that's all well and good. I don't know how but, better to say it. It's, it's, it's that obvious. Okay, but, I ask but Tony, for one thing, I, and they give me something totally different. Okay, so in the last couple minutes here, and again, I'll, I'll hang out with you if you want to give more time. Well, I'm, I'm unable to. We've got a hard stop here in about a couple minutes, as we've agreed. Sure. So I've given you real-world, citable examples prior to this show. You have commented on my video and articles. I'm asking you about the, the FOIA request that I did to the Army asking for UFO-related material, and I got flying wing schematics from World War II and Nazi designs. My question to you here in the end is why can't you acknowledge that in the FOIA, I call it exactly responsive or loosely responsive, that why can't you acknowledge that there is a chance that possibly this FOIA officer, the action officer, released something to you because he saw materials. It fits exactly to well, item number five. Why doesn't Steve Kaminsky then clarify and come forward and explain? Because he doesn't speak for the agency and the FOIA doesn't allow for you or <laughs> I to ask questions. Excuse me, he doesn't How, allow him to respond? That is correct. Because uh, the spokesperson That is incorrect. Does. He and I had many no. discussions over the no, phone no, no, about no, no, this no. FOIA no. request and his replies. No, no, you're, mis you're, you're, you're mishearing what I'm saying. When, when you're asking about clarification, the Pentagon, who is tasked to clarify something on that action, has. You've dismissed it. It's not the action officer's job. And I've dealt with that situation multiple times because when the final determination is made, it can then go either to an appeal, as you well know, or judicial review. At that moment, the action officer has to step back, and those that are tasked to respond will. In this particular situation, that would be Pentagon spokesperson Susan Goff. So you keep asking for clarification. Well, you have it. That was uh, what I do they not said. Have it. That is not true. Well, Susan Goff Susan is speaking Goff on has the refused repeatedly to talk to me, to answer my emails, and instead has left me out to hang. If you're threatening lawsuits uh, everywhere, Tony, uh, I don't blame her. Wait a minute now. The word threaten. Well, that, what, is, uh, what is threatening about a lawsuit? Uh, when you They're threaten a lawsuit, common in it's FOIA. an expression. You, I'm sure you filed some yourself. Uh, okay. Uh, like I said I earlier you, in the show, the I you, said there's... Threatening. You know, you and I view these guys... In a totally different way, John. And again, I have to go back to the fact that I'm, oh, this, I'm involved in research again? and journalism. You're an archivist. <laughs> you depend on a relationship with them to provide to you uh, these FOIA dumps, and you don't. You wouldn't do what I do. You wouldn't contradict them. I can tell by the way you're talking. You wouldn't do it. Then you know nothing about me. No offense. Well, but, I guess not, uh, because... Uh, do you know how you know, I, I've spent tw not. almost 25 years showing how, how public statements and public uh, documents and FOIA responses, a lot have been lies. You know, John, I just got to tell you that in the people that I've talked to and the information I've received from other folks, they cannot understand how anyone could see this any differently. It is so evident that I request... And the request was so specific... Okay. It probably is one of the best FOIA requests ever written. I, I, it is so very clear, <laughs> and you agreed. His responses okay. were clear. You really want to go and on the record for and her say to backpedal and say it had to do with written? weapons, and then for her to not even respond to me or to clarify and leave me out to hang is so obvious. Uh -huh. The only person it's not obvious to is you. So why aren't you on 60 Minutes or Fox News or CNN? Oh, I'll tell you or... about that. Please. Wait, I really do have to go I mean, here. Uh, your... Um, a video or a show that you did, the nails in the coffin. There's no, uh, there's no doubt that uh, mainstream media often consults the Black Vault for information related to UFOs and FOIA. When they saw that video, and again, I want your uh, listeners to know that you didn't even bother to contact me before you released it. I already explained When why. mainstream media saw the video, and here you are on my me. show. When when they uh, when they saw the video, uh, it's evident that they didn't want to pursue it any further, and you've done a disservice uh, to me and to others by having uh, sent out that video and the nasty things uh, that have been said. Uh, resultant from that video, and they walked away from it. Uh, yes, I did receive headlines, but they were from the Daily Mail and from, you know, many, many uh, newspapers around the world. Would I have preferred to have been on 60 Minutes or Tucker Carlson? Yes. But I do believe that your putting up that video may have prevented that from happening. 
I don't have that much power, but I appreciate you the, don't. Uh, you don't. But they well, have, you're accusing me of being a stooge, and they see what you've put out, and when they see it, then they turn off from it, and that's been a disservice. Well, I can give you another example. There's a YouTube channel called uh, Fake or Fiction or Fact and Fiction. Uh, a gentleman whose name I can't remember, and he had a uh, YouTube on this. FOIA, and he refers people to you and to your FOIA. Oh, you're talking about Bill's uh, channel. Video. Yes, and hello to all the Bill's channel's viewers. I really appreciate it. Bill's channel. Thank you, Bill's yeah. channel. So, so Great here's... channel. I love you guys. I wish that uh, Bill didn't do that because he just referred people over to John, and there's an example, a great example, where they see your video and they don't hear from me and my reply. Well, what are you and doing I'm left now? To hang. Okay, well, look, because I, I know I'm You know I'm, what I'm, I'm talking about, John. No, I don't. And I don't mean to because... embarrass you in front of your viewers, but you know that that is what happened. Uh, okay, well, you're not embarrassing me. I, I, I'm, I'm starting to think you're not listening to what I've said. I already explained why I didn't invite you on. You published everything. When I learned that there was more... That makes more, no sense. Can I, it's belied by the fact that you have me on now. You published everything. I mean, if you felt that all the answers were there... Why do you have me on now? Uh, because you came out with more information, Tony. Exactly. That's, that... As, right. as people and, know, mine are continuing <laughs> investigations. My Battelle investigation is going on in its 17th year. I mean, these are things that continue and continue, and for you to immediately hop on it and put out that video uh, did a disservice to ufology. Well, I'm sorry to hear you say that, but like I said, I backed my stuff up with evidence, and I can't even but get you to agree with it. we should have had this conversation, it. John, before you, won't, you okay, put out that that's video. That's fine. You've I think readers now understand that. You've that had what well you over... Really, rather, viewers understand that you know, a real journalist, a professional, Ooh. would have contacted me We're first. start insulting now? <laughs> and then put out the video. Not the other way around, where you put out a video, a damning video, and not consult me, and then later ask me to come on. But nothing you've folks, provided that is has the way negated that it went any of down. them. There's nothing that has come forward that has negated what I originally put out. And I stand by it. I don't change anything. But it doesn't matter, John. No, it does. A professional would have contacted the individual they are going to talk about first. I'm not that difficult to get a hold of. You and I share similar connections and contacts. I have an email on my website the least you could have done was to contact me first before you did the video. I would have done that for you. I do well, that in all my research. My video is all Kevin about Randall, the FOIA request and response. Becky and I have worked on uh, many cases together where we act in the best interest and we try and get the other side of the story before we release a video like that. And now I think you understand why I am angry. Well, I'm sorry that you're angry. You shouldn't get that worked up over it. I don't have that. I shouldn't get that worked up over Tony, it. Tony, can I can I talk on my own show, or is that a? Is yes, that a, you can. Okay, so you can get as angry as you'd like. What my video was was about your FOIA request and response, which you published in full. That's all I was talking about. And I even cited other parts of your article and said, I'm not going to go into that. Why? Because I wasn't going to uh, start nitpicking all the errors that you had. And I'm sorry, there were quite a few. But my whole intent with that video was to talk about the FOIA responses and these exaggerated headlines. When you submitted or sent out whatever you want to call it, your second article, I then, yeah, extended an invitation to you because I No, the third article. It took three articles for you to do that, John. Re regardless. Okay, I sent the I, I, I sent the invitation. And invita this is my point. That I, sent the, I sent the... Anybody <laughs> uh, who does an investigation tries to get both sides of the story before they release anything. That's just good business. That's professional. And yet here you are. And, and you were not still being angry. business. Like, you were not being professional. You could have gotten a hold of me. And instead... You didn't, and it caused some issues because, yes, uh, mainstream media now is avoiding this story uh, in large because there's part no because evidence. they're viewing your video. There's no, I'm sorry, Tony, there's just no evidence. There, there's not. And if there was... There's no evidence of what, John? What you put out what a video that was claiming. damning... That, uh, uh, I asked you... Uh, you didn't even you, consult me on beforehand? I don't I need to. Do you published anybody, everything. Ever. Okay, but when but when you put stuff out, I'm just I decided to give you a chance. There was a, a three, as three you articles well, in as, as you 
and I, nothing that you've produced has showed me anything. I asked you to oh. clarify your headline, and you you gave me crickets there for a little bit, it's and haven't to- hold me. You haven't it, told it, me it, what you can ET interpret crickets. Uh, God, I mean, listen. You want to characterize every little tiny thing, which you tend to do. <laughs> um, I, mean, I won't go into uh, some of the other comments in the video, which had absolutely nothing to do whatsoever, including visuals I had in the uh, uh, in the articles. Yeah, it's misleading. I'm not quite understanding that at all. And I'm anyway, not uh, folks, I thing. have to get going. I have a kind of a hard stop here because I uh, I have a business. But uh, John and I will be talking on uh, Kevin Randall's radio show on Wednesday, and we're going to pick up here. Uh, and John will, will let you know more about that. Yep. And that's it, Tony. As uh, I said in the beginning of the show, I do appreciate you taking the time. I know it gets too, heated because we it, won't no, I do. agree uh, on everything here, but I do uh, admire those who will have the conversation nonetheless. So thank you for that. You and got thank it. you. I all. appreciate it, John. And I really look forward to talking to you again on Wednesday. And uh, really, again, appreciate it so very much. Anytime. And thank you all for listening and watching. This is John Greenwald Jr. signing off. We'll see you next time. I don't think you wanted to talk to me anymore.